In our modern age, internet meme culture is mainstream culture. However, not every meme is for everybody. In this episode, I'm going to discuss an internet meme that I created that gained a life of its own and got an Estee Lauder executive in hot water. Let's take a listen. Hello and welcome to Things You Don't See Every Day with Chris Taliaferro. I am the aforementioned Chris Taliaferro, and joining me for this episode today are two very dear friends. Uh, first is <laughs> first is a musician, a podcaster, um, content creator. There, there's really not much this gentleman doesn't do. The 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 uh, the, the creator of the theme song for this show, believe it or not, Spooks McGee. H- how are you doing, sir? Yeet. I'll take that as you're doing well. Um, uh, also joining me is a uh, another uh, legend in the podcasting game. Uh, I, I, I think he just told me that he's uh, doing uh, 45 different podcasts this week. <laughs> Something along those lines. Uh, Mr. John Livingston. John. What it do? How are you? Just do what it do, baby. Yeah. Just do what it do. <laughs> All right. So, gentlemen, I brought you on to the show today to talk about a little bit of news that I kind of sort of made. Um, there was a, a news story that was going around that uh, centered around a creation of mine. It was... Um, little bit of an interesting situation. So I think I'm going to start from the beginning and just kind of run my listeners through the situation. And then you guys can kind of just interject, let, you know, let me know what you think, you know, does that sound good? Yeah. As long as you give me what you got for a pork chop. Uh, well, <laughs> well, it's, it's funny. You mentioned giving what I've got for a pork chop, because this all centers around, uh, rapper chingy who was popular who? in chingy howard chingy bailey jr he, he was popular in the early 2000s known for such seminal hits as right there uh one call away holiday in uh he, he, he was he was very 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 popular he was he took the world by storm <laughs> he <laughs> I, I would say it's fair to say he's on my rap Mount Rushmore. I, I don't know where he l- lands with you guys. Um, I, I know. I, that's, I, I, <laughs> that sounds like it, he doesn't land very high. <laughs> if, if it weren't for you, I would never have thought about Chingy ever, ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so 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 on the contrary, I believe that he's one of the greatest poets of our generation. But <laughs> whatever. Listen, I, I, mean, I, 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 I just I I just I just like while after you started uh, recording, I hit record. I hit um uh I went on Google and just Google Chingy, and one of the hits, Chingy's album sold six hundred eighty three copies and went credit score. <laughs> <laughs> So, that can't, I mean, that can't be accurate. Is that from Billboard's <laughs> website? <laughs> um, listen, when everyone was saying there, he dared to say there. Listen, l- listen. <laughs> <laughs> he, he 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 walked so hey. Jaquan could run. <laughs> he put holiday ends on the map. Fuck a whole jelly, you know? <laughs> bro. All right. I mean, so, it's so <laughs> weird to sing about the holiday end. It's like making a song about fucking. Uh, Motel Six or some shit. Are you going to the wait, 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 guys, guys, we're we're get, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. People don't know why we're even talking about Chingy. All right. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah, sorry, we're messing up the story. So, so, 
uh, for the past uh, nine years or so, since 2013, I have uh, made it a bit of a hobby uh, to just make... Some would say an obsession. I, that's fair. That, that, no, that <laughs> obsession is, is fair. I'm not even going to begrudge you that. Um, I make memes about Chingy. That's, it's just what I do. It's, I make like maybe a Chingy meme a day. Um, I, I usually, usually it's a, a, at least a, some type of photo meme. Uh, I do videos. Sometimes I will do a, 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 a fake news story, a fake tweet, you name it. I, I've, I've, I've run the gamut in terms of uh, ways I could discuss <laughs> Chingy. I'm actually the moderator. Well, you of... know what they say: a chingy a day keeps the chocolate titties away. Well, why, well <laughs> that's not even true in my case. That the chocolate titties still come my way. Um, no, I'm I'm the moderator. Yeah, of... but they're but they're all covered in beet juice. So no, who wants those? <laughs> See, no, well, John, you can't do too much inside baseball because again, my listeners have no idea what you're talking <laughs> you're about so when you lore. say you're bringing so much lore into the whole pod pod, pod, pod <laughs> verse. But go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So no, so I'm I'm the moderator of the uh, of the r slash chingy subreddit on reddit.com. Uh, I I take this fairly seriously. <laughs> uh, so the other day, I created a meme. Uh, and the meme was one of the uh, classic little golden books that many people read as a child. Uh, and it was a Sesame Street little golden book with Snuffleupagus and Big Bird on the cover. And Snuffleupagus was sick in bed. And what I did was I photoshopped a, <laughs> a surgical mask onto Big Bird's face because, you know, in these COVID times, that's what you would do when someone's sick. And uh, I changed the title of the book from, I think it was Snuffy as the Sniffles or something like that, to my N-word Snuffy done got the Rona at a Chingy concert. So <laughs> um, I, posted, I posted this to Facebook. It, uh, it immediately took off. Um, I also post, well, I posted it to my own personal page. I also posted it to a, a Facebook group, uh, Stop Giving These N-Words Art Supplies. Shout out to them. I love that group. And um, it became very popular there. Uh, between my personal page and uh, the, uh, the post in that group, it got, you know, somewhere around 600, 700 likes. That's where I kind of knew it was really going to take off. I said, okay, this is going to be a thing. Then it kind of started to spread on Twitter. Then it started to spread on Instagram. Then people started cropping out my watermark. And, and when that happens, that's when you really know it's it's going somewhere. So well, I just want to be clear. When you say N-word, do you mean niggas? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know what's funny? In, in my in my personal life, it's it, it's just a word I don't use, which makes the fact that this meme got so popular very ironic to me. Um, because yeah, I thought it was interesting that you used the asterisks when you wrote the meme. I did. I I, I did. I I, I self censored uh, the n word app, but um, so you know it circulated. I I started seeing it shared all over the place. Um, <clears throat> people were messaging me and saying, "Hey, like you know, look, I saw I saw your meme on Twitter. I saw your meme in this group. Yada yada." It was fun. Uh, then. The meme was shared by a gentleman named John Dempsey. John Dempsey is an executive at Estee Lauder, where he's been for, oh. for over 30 years. And for whatever reason, he thought this meme was hilarious. So he decided to share it. Now, John Dempsey being a older Caucasian man, I think the fact that he uh, shared a meme with the N-word in it, ruffled some feathers, rubbed some people the wrong way, and there was a huge backlash against him, ultimately resulting in his suspension without pay, which is currently ongoing. He's currently suspended. And he also, because of this suspension, issued... An apology. <laughs> would you like to hear? Would you guys like to hear the apology? Oh, for sure. Okay. So this is this is. Nigga, please. 
<laughs> this is this is uh, Mr. Dempsey's statement. <clears throat> I am terribly sorry and deeply ashamed that I hurt so many people when I made the horrible mistake of carelessly reposting a racist meme without reading it beforehand. There are not enough words to express my remorse and sorrow. Not only did I hurt many people whom I respect, the terrible mistake that I made has undermined everything that I have been working for since I began my career 31 years ago. The meme is the furthest thing from what I stand for, and I should have never reposted it. I am so sorry that I let down the company that I have dedicated my life's work to, as well as its employees, artists, friends, and colleagues. I hope that in time, people will judge me not for this awful mistake, but for my lifetime of words, actions, <laughs> which demonstrate my respect for all people. That's that's the I words of Mr. John Dempsey. Day we will not be judged by the content of memes, <laughs> but by the color of our font. <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge me by the color of my meme, but by the content of Chingy's character. Give me what you've got for a pork chop. <laughs> I like the way you do it right there. Swing your <laughs> hips when you're walking, let down your hair. Now the the key the key to a good Martin Luther so King don't impression. Let, um, wait, 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 hold so on. Don't wait. let Coretta know. <laughs> wait, wait, I don't, I don't tell you guys. <laughs> the key to a good Martin Luther King impression, and not a good one, mind you, but just an impression where people will know who you're doing. You have to combine a Southern Baptist preacher with a ghost. So you're like. Ooh, 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 all of a sudden, I sound like I'm bringing you to the mountaintop. Ooh, get out of this house. Ooh. So, so, so it's just a Paul Bearer from like uh, the WWE. Oh, yeah. No, if, if you raise it an octave, it turns into Paul Bearer. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Actually, yeah, wait, that, hear, you know, I that sounded kind of like Tiny the Tim. <laughs> the, yeah. yeah. Uh, wait, I, I can definitely hear Martin Luther uh, King doing some of the rock dialogue. <laughs> if you <laughs> smell, <laughs> finally, <laughs> Martin <laughs> has come <laughs> back <laughs> to the mountaintop. <laughs> Coretta, you need to know your role and shut your mouth. <laughs> you Your white supremacists say that they believe that we are subhuman, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we, we are getting so off track here, guys. So so I, I needed to hear your thoughts on this man sharing this meme. And I also wanted your thoughts on his apology because I have I have issues with it. But just what, what's what's your take? Well, I come from the era where memes were just starting up. I grew up on memes. Unless you wanted to talk first, Mr. John. Oh, go for it. Okay. So, yeah, basically, um, I grew up on the Earn My Gods and the top text, bottom text, and the fucking, uh, you know, you know, we live in a society and all kinds of, you know, you know, all our base are not uh, here or whatever. Like, I grew up on memes. <laughs> and I all, it, was, it was probably one of the prime forms of, of communication in, in my youth, as well as one of the one of the, the it basically revolutionized humor in a way that people had never seen it before it, it recontextualized humor and i always thought it was interesting but I never thought it would get someone fired <laughs> it is very surprising to see someone it look because it looks like he's going to lose his job cuz he's been suspended for i want to say like 2 days now i don't know it's I not looking good job. but it's just interesting to me that you can get fired from a fucking meme? Well, this is the world we live in now. A meme can get you fired. I'm not saying that what he, that him as a white man posting it is not inappropriate. What I am saying is the fact that it's a fucking meme and someone got fired from a meme. Yeah. That's well, I, very I, strange. I, I can I can understand that because companies have an image to uphold. And if Absolutely. you're not doing something if you're doing something that uh goes against their image. Yeah. I can I can get that depending on the meme. My yeah. thing is who the fuck is John Dempsey? Before I, this, thought, he was a, I thought he was a boxer. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, no, nobody knew who this cat was outside of Estee Lauder. 
You know, I thought some dude named Estee Lauder was in charge of it, or Estee's <laughs> son or daughter or what have you. Or, or, or maybe uh, uh, Am- Emilio Estevez, maybe? I don't know who knows. <laughs> right. <laughs> I've been um, looking at a lot of research on YouTubers recently, and just because I'm interested in the concept of making YouTube content, and it's pretty much a, a rampant right now. TikTokers and YouTubers will, you know, say some insensitive shit, and they make a somber apology. It's almost like, as long as you make a good apology, you could you could probably get away with most prob- prob- probably slot, probably slide probably well, slide. True, true. I mean, a good apology, yes, but this was far, oh, far, I, far I, from I, a good can, apology. Can we can we t- can we talk about the quality of this apology for a second? So I don't know. I felt like it was really heartfelt. It, <laughs> It <laughs> wait, wait, wait! No. My, my, so, fa- my, no, wait, no, John. Do you want? I think I know what you're about to say. I'll, let, I'll let you go ahead, John. Yeah. So, so when you when you posted that apology on uh, on your uh, Facebook page, I immediately <laughs> like, just. <laughs> so, there are 17 words in the meme itself in mm-hmm. what you created, Chris, mm-hmm. without zooming words. in to do the whole um, anchor. Uh, stuff you should you don't see every day. Seventeen words, and that's if you include a little golden book and Sesame Street. So you're telling me that this this executive who's been in the business for thirty plus years didn't read those yeah, seventeen be, words? Because because that's the thing. Just in case uh, listeners uh, forget what I, you know uh, when I when I read his statement in 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 his apology, he says, and I quote. Uh, I'm terribly sorry and deeply ashamed that I hurt so many people when I made the horrible mistake of carelessly reposting a racist meme without reading it beforehand. So so the story he's running with is he saw this picture of Snuffleupagus and Big Bird with Snuffleupagus sick in bed in a little golden book and just said, oh, you know, little golden books. This is great. And just shared it without knowing what the content of the actual picture was. I'm calling shenanigans. The, the, <laughs> either shenanigans or there's a hundred percent chance that he's got some Sesame Street porn on his uh, computer. It's gotta be. Or, it's, he thought that this was. one of the two. The apology was written by one of his reps and he's literally um, illiterate. <laughs> that, listen, listen. Those are actually two very strong possibilities. So right. I, I don't know. Here's my I, thing. Okay, yeah. Here's my thing. We live in an era where apologies are super... Everything is content. Even a fucking apology is content. And you go, hey, it's time for us to apologize now. And then we're going to fine tool, fine comb and, and, and skim through your apology to see if it's apology enough. And if it's not apology, it doesn't suffice, then we're not going to take that apology. It's very strange. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's it, like, imagine imagine any other context. You're walking down the street, you bump somebody. Oh, sorry about that. You know what? I didn't appreciate that. Sorry. I don't believe you. I need you to really give me a sincere, genuine apology for bumping my shoulder when we walk past each other, or I'm going to have to call the authorities for assault. Yeah, a, a lot of a lot of times these days, an apology isn't enough for the court of public opinion. So although yeah, you, it you doesn't may, matter. If, if, if yeah, the no, world believes that you ain't shit. You ain't shit. Well, that's the thing. So you you may lose your job, or you may you know kind of suffer. Uh, you know, the, the 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 mob may get their pound of flesh, so to speak. But there, there are some people that will never let it go. Um, you know, Michael Vick is one that comes to mind. Uh, I have a lot of friends that are animal lovers. And to this day, they are like, fuck that guy. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, but I mean, he served his time. He's kept his nose clean. It, he's worked with charities to help with animals and rescues. It's like, what else can he do other than just die? You know, so it's kind of like... At a, at a certain point, it's like, what do you really want people to do? You know. So, yeah. so like Michael Mike, Richard, Mike, Mike, Mike Vick is a is a is a weird case there because I mean, in my forty plus years of life, I've I've noticed one thing, well, two things. You don't mess with white pe- white people's dogs. It just no, <laughs> no, there, there, no. There's there's no coming back from that. I mean, look at look at all the uh, all, all the shit that um. Uh, Dorothy uh, did because Toto almost got uh, got eaten, or <laughs> the three Mike Wick, um, John Wick movies. You know, you, you, no, you don't. You don't mess with white people's dogs. You, 
Their kids? Yeah, depends on the situation. Their parents? <laughs> maybe. Their money? You're, you're treading on thin ice. Thin ice, but, but the but the dogs. That's a bridge too. That's a bridge too far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder. Like when? When? When do? When? When do we? Um, decide that everything is okay because if you look at uh chris brown <clears throat> i i found that that whole case very interesting because there's a lot of people that still support him i i don't technically support him like that anymore because i'm not trying to be a politician for any kind of domestic abuse right but at the same time it's like you know he's gone past the point where it's like it, it was probably more than 10 years ago and it's still you know if you go into any comment section it's very you see chris brown is automatically you know his greatest hits are some stupid joke that they're gonna make well you know i mean for for me like, for me personally i i look at chris brown the way i wish people looked at michael vick now me personally i thought what he did was disgusting and mm -hmm. i don't want to have anything to do with him i don't support his music but yeah there's another r&b artist I, I, but i don't but it, so. but i don't but i don't i don't begrudge him um i don't begrudge him the uh you know his right to make music and if people want to listen like you know if he's not in trouble if he's not in trouble with the law and he's you know above board you know i there's nothing i can do about it but i don't i don't i don't lose sleep i, I don't lose sleep over it the way uh i feel like a lot of people lose sleep over michael vick but but i i don't i don't want to inter i don't want to interrupt you guys but i i want to i want to move on because we're actually uh run a little low on time um, I just wanted I just wanted to mention one thing because I wanted to get your your guys thoughts on it before we started to wrap things up and get out of here. Um, so uh, in terms of uh, my position on you know because we're because we're talking about apologies, we're talking about you know whether or not he should have done this, yada yada. Um, you know and and you know what what will satisfy the mob. I think all of that ties into, uh, in a, you know, my, my opinion, which I kind of summed up on Reddit earlier today, which is Mr. Dempsey should have had much better situational awareness in the situation, taking, taking morality out of it, right? Taking morality out of it. As a 50-something-year-old Caucasian male, you can't think that a meme with the N-word being suggested in it is funny enough to literally risk your reputation by posting it on Instagram. So even if even if you think it's funny, even if you, or whether you think it's funny, regardless of what you think, I, I can't imagine him thinking that it's a good idea just from an optics standpoint. So that's that's where I think he fucked up. That's why I really have no sympathy for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, I mean do, that, do, that's that's what all accounts are for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you want to post some <laughs> shitty memes? Yeah, make a fake account. But here's the thing: he's too old to know that shit. He's like, <laughs> you know. Yeah, then he should. Then he should stay off Instagram. Right. right. You know? But honestly, social media isn't for everyone. What the fuck does the what is the, what was his position at at uh, Estee Lauder? I think he was like the uh, president the president. Yeah, he's the uh, executive okay, so, president, something like yeah. Okay, so what is the executive of? A fashion company need to be doing on social media is he marketing something is he promoting his <laughs> business like what does he need it for you know yeah and and <laughs> and and again for if, yucks for, it, for last is the last of some memes he, he, he's looking for sesame street stuff for his collection <laughs> <laughs> and just when he just when he thought he found a sassy saucy one he's getting in all kinds <laughs> of trouble What's the world coming uh, to? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I want to ask you a question. Sure. To Talia Sarah. Okay. I'm. I'm gonna try and make it quick because we're under the gun. Oh well. Why don't we just? No, no, no. Go, go, ahead, go, go, ahead, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep this party going and get us an hour, an go. hour and a half, two hour podcast on some Jerome. Now no, we got. Now we got. We, we got. We got to roll out of here in a second. Go, go, go. Let your question. Come on. Now, come on. All right. I wanted to ask you a question because you put this into the universe and you created this thing. That has you know started a wildfire, which is great because it's going to give your podcast what exactly you needed a little bit of limelight, and it's going to keep on coming up. And I'm really proud to see that happen. I'm really happy to see that happening. But the meme could have just said Snuffy got the Rona at a chicken concert. Why did you specifically choose that type of type of text and vernacular in that type of dialogue, to, in that type of uh, colloquialism? Oh, what that's oh, I, I can I can answer that very very simply and succinctly, and then um, I'm gonna give you guys a chance to uh, let everyone know where they can find you on social media. Um, okay, I um, 
I made that meme specifically for a black audience. Much, oh. much like, much like a lot of humor is oftentimes created for a black audience, and then um, it finds its way to other people. Uh, that's what that's what happened with this meme. So you know, no, mm. no more, no less. This this was a meme for black people, and Ooh, okay, he, he okay. decided to share it. And that's, that's yeah, that's true. I had that happen to me similar, something similar to like that happened to me. I'm not going to go into a long story, but basically, I posted something about Michelle Obama. And he went off about how she was a man. And we, the, the comment section tore his ass up. But he's like, I don't understand a lot of the things you post. So I just thought that you were posting this because of blah, 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 blah. But a lot of the things I post are black memes, black things that are, that are popular in internet culture. That if you're just a regular white guy who doesn't listen to hip hop and doesn't associate with black people, you're not going to get any yeah. of it. Yeah, you got you, you got to read the room. You got to read the room. That's that's yeah. what it, that's what it boils, yeah. that's what it boils down to. Um, but yeah. we but we got to get out of here, John. Uh, where can people find you on social media? Um, just look for my name. I'm pretty much everywhere. Um, don't do as much with the uh, podcasting uh, as I used to. Um, other than guest appearances on shows during Black History Month. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, that seems to be my job now. But um, but yeah. Um, Facebook, John Livingston. Um, always catch me at uh, Angry Black Rant discussion group on Facebook. That's one of the uh, ones I um, I moderate there. Yeah. Okay. All right. And uh, Mr. Spooks McGee, what about yourself? Oh my goodness. Okay. So <clears throat> pretty much like if you go to Google and you type Spooks McGee, it'll auto correct it and it'll show you my music. S P O O K S M C G H I E. And you can find my music, my videos, my art, whatever. And uh, as far as the podcast, type in bloomerpod.com on your local web browser, and it will take you to your favorite link to listen to the podcast on your preferred streaming platform, The Late Bloomer Podcast. Okay, okay. Gentlemen, I really appreciate both of you joining me today. This was I appreciate you, brother. <laughs> this was a See, lot of fun. You do it right there. Right there. I have a dream. <laughs> <laughs> not, not enough. Uh, now, now I have to Photoshop uh, like Casper the Friendly Ghost and Martin Luther King together somehow. I, I'll figure so. I'll figure something out. I got it. <laughs> they, they, they have to be at a Holiday Inn though. Okay, no, that oh, deal, yeah. deal. No, can, can, consider, consider it, consider it done. Um, now, I, 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 anytime I have a good time with my guests, I, I ask them. So I'm going to ask the both of you. Uh, okay. You think I, you think you I can get? You had a good time. I, I mean, I thought I had a good time. Can I, can I maybe count on you guys to maybe come back on the show sometime? Hell, fuck sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna hold both, both of you to that. Uh, but I I do really really uh, very much appreciate you guys coming on, and we will be back right after this. A leader, a patriot, and also a hip hop legend. His name is Chingy, and he's running for president of the United States. I'm a bigger fan of more of his conservative principles. As a freelance assassin, I'm very much in favor of Chingy's economic policies. Listen, Chingy is big on social distancing. At all his concerts, he makes sure that there's nobody there. I heard a rumor that he's not uh, taking slavery off the table. He's got my vote. In 2024, Give the voting booth what you've got for a pork chop and vote for Howard Chingy Bailey Jr. Paid for by things you don't see every day with Chris Talifero and r slash Chingy subreddit. It's your boy Chinga Ling and I want to say thank you for your support. Thank you for listening to this episode of Things You Don't See Every Day with Chris Talifero. I would absolutely love if you followed us on social media. There's a few places you can do that. You can do it on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, or YouTube. If you go to YouTube and you type in things you don't see every day with Chris Talifero into the search bar, we pop right up. And in terms of Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, it's the same name in all three places. It's at, and when I say at, I mean that little at symbol, the A with the little around it. You know what I mean? At things you don't see podcast. That's at things you don't see podcast. One more time, at things you don't see podcast. Type that in to TikTok. Facebook, 
or Instagram, and you'll find us. You'll find video content. I make videos pretty much every day. So if you want to see some funny stuff in between audio episodes, that's the place to be. You want to be with us on social media. Engage. Leave comments. Talk to me. I love talking to you guys. It's amazing. Join me on this journey. I love you guys for doing so. Take care, everybody.